Captain Marvel is the newest entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and stars Brie Larson as Furs, a.k.a. Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, who crash lands on Earth in the year 1995. Danvers has no memory of her past or how she obtained the strange ability to shoot energy blasts from her fists and has been fighting on one side of an intergalactic conflict between two alien worlds. While on Earth she tries to uncover the secrets of her past, but her presence has now brought the alien conflict to Earth. I didn't go into this film with a lot of anticipation. I knew next to nothing about the Captain Marvel character and I thought that the trailers were very underwhelming. And the film I expected to get from the trailers was pretty much the film I ended up getting. I thought it was just okay and quite underwhelming for an MCU film. In terms of how much I liked it, it's around the same level as Thor The Dark World and Ant-Man and the Wasp. Again, just okay. I found it most similar to the first Thor film and Iron Man 3 in terms of the story elements. Like Thor, she comes from another world, crashes on Earth, gains a trust of a few earthlings and then fights an enemy from that other world. And like Iron Man 3, the first half of the film is strange, confusing and a bit off. So remember in Iron Man 3 when, spoilers, it turns out that Ben Kingsley's Mandarin is just an actor and the real villain is somebody else? I'm one of the people who actually really liked that twist. I thought it was really funny and it explained why we hadn't really seen that much of Kingsley and how he was kind of an underwhelming villain. When that reveal happens, it explains why the first half of the film feels so off, but you're still left with half a film that's really kind of boring. The same kind of thing happens here. I won't give away exactly what happens because it's a pretty good reveal, but in the same way, it leaves the film with a boring and unengaging first half. I'll talk about the second half first because it is pretty good. The action's good, the humor's much better, and the story is more interesting. The highlights for me throughout were Ben Mendelsohn as the villain, he has some great moments and some really interesting character development, and Samuel L. Jackson as a younger Nick Fury. It's cool to see Nick Fury take a more active role in the film because once Larson lands on Earth, it pretty much becomes a buddy movie with her and Jackson as the two leads. Lashana Lynch is good as well as a friend from Larson's past, but I really wish she had been introduced earlier so that we could anticipate the moment where she comes face to face with the friend she thought had been dead all these years. But the introduction and the reunion scene happen at the same moment, so her extreme emotion feels very over the top. But it's a structure problem, not an acting one. And though some of them are a bit cheesy and feel a bit forced, I did like a lot of the nods to the other Marvel movies and the explanation of why certain things in the future become known by the names that they are. That's all good stuff. The problem is the first half and the setup of the characters in the world. When the change happens in the second half, it explains why things are that way, but I didn't care about anyone on screen or anything that was happening. I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there bored. A lot of information about Larson's character and the alien world are thrown at you very quickly and I found it hard to follow. I had to just keep telling myself, right, these ones are the good guys and these ones are the bad guys and if you keep that straight in your head then you'll get through this thing okay. I didn't know what Jude Law's character's name was and he's in the film quite a lot and I couldn't remember if they'd even said his name out loud. I looked it up afterwards and I still can't remember what it is. Terms like Kree, Skrull, Hala, Star Force, uh, the Supreme Intelligence are just thrown out really quickly in like the first few minutes and I struggled to follow it. And because our main character has been in this world for some time, she already knows all this information, so there's no real need to explain it fully. I was also confused about Larson's character. I know that her backstory is supposed to be a mystery and unknown to her, but it wasn't made clear how much she remembers, how long she's been on the planet and how she got her powers, and does she even know that she's from Earth? Sometimes they say things like that which was given can be taken away, referring to her powers, which to me sounds like the aliens from the planet she's living on gave her the powers. It's revealed later on that that's not at all what happened, and they don't think that, so maybe it's just me, but I found it needlessly confusing. A few things did pique my interest, like when I found out that the villains were shapeshifters, I thought that was pretty cool and would, could lead to uh, a lot of interesting scenarios, but other than that, I just felt bored and I didn't really care. But the main problem with the first half, I think, is Larson herself. I didn't really like her character. She never seems challenged or out of her depth. Something happens, she fearlessly handles it, and that's it. Action scenes just happen out of nowhere with no real purpose. She never feels in danger, and the action scenes don't seem to have a point, so I don't care. She never struggles, she never looks worried or surprised, and her expression seems only to fluctuate between determined and frustrated. But that's just the action scenes. The rest of the time, she's very quippy and kind of a smartass, but that doesn't work either because either from the writing or the direction or the acting 
she just comes across as smug. During those scenes, she kind of always has a smirk on her face. When she lands on Earth and people like Nick Fury are asking her questions about who she is and what's going on, she'll do this thing where she'll answer them matter-of-factly, like, isn't it obvious? And then steps out of frame, like she doesn't have time for them anymore. Like, I've answered the question, now I'm gonna go. What's that? It's a scroll. Then she smirks, quirks her eyebrow, and Samuel L. Jackson looks confused. Over and over again. All fish out of water opportunities from humour are wasted, and she comes across as an idiot, because she obviously already knows about Earth, so how does she not know that no one knows about aliens or anything she's talking about. It makes the much needed exposition annoying when it should have been fun and interesting. Now Tony Stark was able to get away with that stuff because the shit he said was actually funny and he's kind of supposed to be a dick. Other people in the film keep calling him on stuff like that and he also has very humbling moments and he shows fear and happiness and despair. The Tony Stark character hits a lot of different emotional notes and Robert Downey Jr. is a good enough actor to make it work while still keeping the character as a smartass. And he's able to do all that in just the first Iron Man film. Captain Marvel doesn't have those things, I feel like I don't really know her character. The characters in the films say things to each other and to her, like, she's stronger than you know, and you are a hell of a pilot and a great friend. Show, don't tell. Show us she's a great pilot. Show us she's a great friend through her actions and her interactions. Like, imagine it. Who's that? That's Steve Rogers. He once jumped on top of a grenade to save a bunch of people. It turned out the grenade was fake, but what a hell of a guy. You're just gonna have to take my word on that because we're not gonna show you. And I had a bit of a laugh earlier on reading the Wikipedia page where it says that Larson and Lynch spent time with real Air Force pilots to prepare for the role. Why? There's no scenes like that in the film. They barely spend any time in planes. The parts of the trailer that gave me hope were the moments that seemed to be flashbacks to her as a child and as a recruit and a pilot. And she does this thing where she keeps standing up in different time periods in the same way with a really determined look on her face. What I thought they were going to do is make her character someone who struggles but that her greatest strength is that she never gives up. The story would have been really good if it had that and it kind of does but it's not really fully realised and it's muddied with all these other things. Like she's too ruled by her emotions and her emotions turn out to be her greatest strength and her powers are suppressed because she can't handle them but not suppressing them is also her greatest strength. Also because she's raised there, she's part Cree and part human, but her human side turns out to be her greatest strength. One of the things I did like was the way she defeated the villain. It was a bit of a subversion to how that usually goes down, but then the thing she says right after she defeats him makes it seem like the way she defeated them was the end of yet another arc for her character, which was only set up once in the beginning and then never touched on again until that moment where she defeats him, and is also confusingly mixed up with all the other emotional lessons that her character goes through. The visuals and the effects are of course top notch, but the choice of settings for the various scenes that take place make the film and the story, which have such big ideas, feel disappointingly small. I know it seems like I really didn't like the film, but like I said, the second half is pretty good, and I'm actually going to give Captain Marvel a B-. I really wanted to be blown away by this film, and I wasn't, but I also feel like when I see it for the second time, which I plan on doing, I'll probably enjoy it a lot more. Just like with Iron Man 3, and actually even Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which I thought was just okay the first time I saw it, and then when I watched it again, I, I really loved it. I'm going to check out some of the other reviews for the film once I've posted this up, and hopefully I'll have my mind changed. But as it stands right now, I've never been less excited to see one of these Marvel standalone characters interact with all the other Avengers in the future. And also the mid credits scene kind of spoiled that too. Thank you very much for watching my review. Please like and subscribe and comment down below. Let me know if you've seen Captain Marvel and what you thought of it. If you agree or disagree with any of my points or if you have any points of your own. And let me know what other Avenger are you most looking forward to seeing Captain Marvel interact with? And what Marvel character that hasn't been introduced yet do you really want to see get introduced next? I'll be back soon with more reviews and I'll see you then.